<laughs> they need an excuse for period costumes. <laughs> We're talking about the big short. <laughs> Just a huge excuse to throw in period costumes. I know, right? Like, everybody dressing like, like that. Is that really how we looked five years ago? <laughs> <laughs> we all had the sweet Ryan Gosling tan. I don't know, like, some of them looked like, like, Ryan Gosling looked like he fell out of a movie where he should have been, like... Like the fucking like seventies. Uh huh. Like the, the the nice guys trailer we got. <laughs> yeah, that looks awesome. By the way, you know he, he, his look. He reminded me of uh, of actually of Bradley Cooper when we were watching Joy the other day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although they got to he gets to throw the f bomb around a lot more than they could enjoy. <laughs> that was PG thirteen. They could only say it once. They they used it a lot in this one. <laughs> you, know, you know what I liked about the the main characters in this movie? I could picture Sam Rockwell playing every single one of them. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely yes. Boy, that would be amazing. It's actually kind of disappointing now that he wasn't in it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> they weren't. They weren't sure which one they wanted Rock wanted Rockwell for. So it turns out they couldn't get him. So everyone just had to be Rockwell. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm okay with. I totally am. I actually really like this movie a lot. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it was a weird... It was a weird creature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the first, like, few minutes of this movie, I honestly didn't know what the fuck to make of it. <laughs> it was... You know what it is? It's... It. I mean, it is a weird little creature, but it would have been perfectly right at home around, like, 95 when, like, Get Shorty came out, and we had stuff like, you know, like, later on, like, Boiler Room and things like that. Yeah. I kind of dug that. It was, like, an interesting little throwback to that kind of movie. I can see that. Yeah, like, it was, it, it, it was a, it, it, true story. It's a, it's a good story, but, mm. but yeah, like, like, just the, the, the framing and the style and the, the quasi sort of, like, fourth wall breaking narration from, yeah. from Ryan Gosling character and like just weird little like interludes at times and montages like it was very odd it was it was like it was like they're like okay we're gonna make this movie about Wall Street mm -hmm. but we'd like to do like 75% of it like it's a fucking uh, Michael Moore documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Even has "Keep on Rocking in the Free World" on the soundtrack. <laughs> like odd times, like like people are doing like almost like talking head segments, but it's just like during like just suddenly is happening during uh -huh. a normal dialogue exchange. Cameras will zoom in, go out of focus, kind of zoom back out. Shots where they used to see a lot of way back when, like uh, shots where it's a conversation, but then cuts to like just an insert shot of the person sitting there saying nothing while their lines are playing over it. Yeah. A kind of thing we used to see a lot, kind of like back about like, 20 yeah. years ago. <laughs> it just, it was, it was very odd. Like, like the first few minutes, because like I I didn't know that. I mean, it's impossible to tell from a trailer. Mm -hmm. the, but like no, that it's like the movie's actually playing. Like oh, it is just absolutely made out of jump cuts, just all kinds of shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like somebody will be talking, and then like I, <laughs> honestly, the closest thing I could compare this movie to Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's talking, and then suddenly it cuts to like a picture of a kid next to a deer. Mm -hmm. and then we're in like the fucking outer space. Now we're yeah. looking at a house. Now it goes back to Steve Carell. Yeah. Like, but like he's still talking, but he's not actually like the picture is just a, like him just sitting there. And now Ryan Gosling is talking about Jenga. Yeah. <laughs> but then halfway through the conversation, he'll stop and look at us to say an aside to mm. look back to them. But go, they don't know. By like, the way, that really happened. Like he's having like these fucking Zach Morris style like timeouts. Time <laughs> like what the fuck is going on? It kept it very entertaining. Like the movie had a, it has a real sense of humor about itself considering it's this like subject very matter. Very grim topic. It, it's like <laughs> uh, the Doctor Strange love of Wall Street. Like it's a very very grim subject. Yeah. Uh, that movie being the nuclear end of the world, this one being the financial end of the world, and both then, of them having wild senses of humor about it. Yeah, it's like, because <laughs> all of the situations that are going on are just so bizarre. Mm -hmm. Like, 
fucking Steve Carell sitting in a strip club giving, getting a fucking like private dance just so he can ask a stripper about mm. her home loans. Yeah, and that's when he realizes there's a fucking bubble. There is a fucking <laughs> bubble, god damn it. This well, yeah, stripper, now it all makes fucking sense. Because this fucking stripper has five homes, a yeah. condo, and probably like 20 fucking mortgages. Mm -hmm. It's like, huh. <laughs> this movie had, um, it had people like me in mind, meaning, um, I don't know shit about the economy. <laughs> I don't know how numbers work. I don't know how banks work or any of that. All I know is no one honestly knows. I definitely don't. <laughs> this this know, movie is proof of that. No one fucking knows. But at least they know enough about it to be crooked about it. <laughs> I don't even know that. Like, I know that I belong to a bank and there's money in it. I know that. And this movie, you know, it realizes not everyone fucking knows what a CDO is. I remember that term from economy class in high school, a class I did not do well at. So. <laughs> So here's this movie goes, look, we know not everyone knows what the shit we're talking about. So here's uh, Margot Robbie in a bubble bath. She'll explain it to you. <laughs> yeah, th those were so <laughs> bizarre. Like, it was just keep like, like, we need to put this in normal people terms. Mm -hmm. So to help explain how these are bundled into loan packages, uh, here's Anthony Bourdain to explain it by cutting up a fish. And that so worked. I totally got that analogy. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's how you sell halibut. Wait a minute. Oh, my God. Now I understand the subprime loan market. Now I can work on Wall Street. Now I, <laughs> I am totally ready to be Gordon Gecko right now. <laughs> I'm sure I got a giant phone in the basement. Or a uh, uh, two, a couple, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> next to my case of Mountain Dew, uh, Mountain Dew Typhoon, um, or uh, later here is this expert on Wall Street. Oh, and also Selena Gomez. <laughs> She explained everything. He was just there to surprise, like provide moral support for <laughs> Selena. Like, like all right. I can dig it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was just, it was such a weird fucking thing. But yeah, like, I, uh, <laughs> I was watching, like, some of that, like, it's like, it's like, uh, I vaguely know some of the stuff that they're talking about because, as luck would have it, the weird twists and turns that life takes, <laughs> uh, during the time frame this movie was set, I was mm. actually working as a loan acquisition officer really? for a major bank. Oh, really? <laughs> so that's fun. <laughs> I thought you worked at the... Oh, shit. I, uh, I don't know why. I thought you worked at the hotel when, uh, uh, when back when we first met. No, uh, uh, Granted, I was really drunk back then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, back, uh, yeah, back when I first moved here to... Uh, to Springfield was mm -hmm. back in 2006. Uh, I worked uh, at the hospital for a little bit because it's what I'd been previously doing before I moved here. Then I moved from that over to working at AT&T. It was mm -hmm. singular at the time. Uh, and then after that, I took a, a, a temp to hire position. Uh, I worked a couple weeks for... Uh, for Chase Bank, and then went to work uh, as a loan uh, acquisition mm -hmm. uh, over for Wells Fargo. Yeah. And did that for the better part of a year. Until all of that shit started happening. Like, they, it, and it, it, it was like a lot of the stuff, like, even in like, a, a branch as far removed as here from fucking uh -huh. Wall Street. Like, a lot of that stuff was like, was like, you know, it's like, there's fucking like TVs everywhere, yeah. fucking like tickers always running all over the fucking place. Mm -hmm. And it started being the sort of thing, like, like, uh, I, I, I primarily only dealt in prime mortgages. Mm -hmm. Uh, but even on that, like, there, there was stuff that was like, it's like, all over the fucking place. Like you'd come across like some of these loans and is like, like here's a person who's buying like a $1.5 million house mm -hmm. taking out a loan for it. And then you'd get to like their FICO information and it's blank. And then you'd turn the page and like, okay, well here's their, their proof of income documents. Yeah. And it's like, Oh, 
this woman doesn't even have a job. She's living off of alimony and she's buying a $1.5 million house in fucking Southern California. Mm -hmm. This is not going to work. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, uh, it started eventually getting like, yeah, like it's like every day you'd come to work and there were just more and more like empty desks. Mm -hmm. And eventually, uh, a couple whole departments folded and basically had to, uh, like roll into other departments. Yeah. And by the time I finally got laid off, I was the last person in my entire like area. Like there was no one even like within like that side of the building. Like I was the only person in that row, that whole section, like my supervisors were on a different fucking floor. Mm -hmm. Like it was just fucking ridiculous. And finally, like whenever it finally came time, like, they basically like they called me on a Sunday night uh-huh to let me know uh, asking me like it's like hey do you work tomorrow and yeah. I was like yeah it's like there's a change in that <laughs> that's how they put it <laughs> basically like they they called to let me know like they asked me straight up do you work Monday and uh-huh. I said like, yeah yeah I, I, I and it ate mm-hmm. like Actually, you're not. <laughs> Ooh, wrong answer. <laughs> and they, uh, like, they didn't even have me go back to the office to get my stuff. Like, I didn't get to even get like the yeah. like, sad parade of walking out with box thing. Like, like oh. <laughs> they, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they FedExed my shit to my house. <laughs> I always wanted to like. Uh, but then they asked me to drive back to drop off my bag. Jesus! <laughs> it's like fucking really. I already chucked it in the river. <laughs> what the fuck you want? I don't fucking care. When that was going on, I was working in a video store, and <laughs> drinking a lot, and I'm sure I rented out Wall Street. Money never sleeps to people. <laughs> if that was out around then. Um. Yeah, that, that happened, and then I was unemployed for several months, yeah. and then that's when I started working at the hotel. Oh, okay. <laughs> I always wanted to, like, uh, um, be in that, you know, leave, like, some building with the box, like, in the movies, because I always wanted to have, like, a French baguette sticking out of it. <laughs> whenever you see in movies, whenever someone has groceries, they always have that sticking out. Oh, yeah. I just wanted French, that to be the... French baguette, like, some yeah. kale. Somehow there's always oranges on top. Oranges on top. Like, what or, are they sitting on, and who's buying just, like... Two individual oranges yeah. and not like wrapping them up or anything, just carrying them up to like like these two celery stalks yeah. sticking out. It's like no, you put those in the fucking produce bags. Who's just putting shit in bags loose? I wanted to combine that with like the you've been fired box. <laughs> you know what I would have done like if I uh actually wait, I kind of did because I did work a temp job at one point and this nothing. It was just like positions were just being discontinued and everything. I was there. We was just, this was at Blue Cross. And uh, so when we were in our room, because we were just data entry, I was one I was one of the fastest typers in the group, so I stayed the longest. So at around the last week or so I was like probably about the last one there. So I just combined desks and made super desk. Fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one ever came in our room. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> Which just sucks for me because, like, and again, going by absolutely flawed logic, banking sense, mm-hmm. uh, I was kept on. Uh, I was the last person let go uh, from, for my my department uh, because my quality numbers were through mm-hmm. the fucking roof. Yeah, but then uh, some of the people from like the secondary loan market and refi like stuff for like they were being brought in like it was basically like you can have a pink slip or you can have one of their jobs yeah and so you basically had to choose do i get laid off or do i have to be the person who f- basically firing someone else so i uh-huh. can have their desk <laughs> yeah and uh i was kept on uh to keep churning out what little bit of like like it was to the point like like it, it when i started there like there was constantly work there was overflowing amounts mm. of work and then by the time like I was uh, I was let go like we'd have like like my my quota was only like going like reviewing and approving 
uh, 14 loan packets a day. Mm-hmm. I'd be lucky some days if I saw one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and even then, like they, they were usually just, just, just crap. Yeah. It was just, it was absolute crap. Like yeah. they were saying in the, in, in the fucking movie, like, like there's, there's no way it would be approved, but mm-hmm. it, they were just grasping at anything they could get their hands on. It looked halfway decent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, they, they kept me on cause my quality was great because the people that were going to be taking my job, uh, their quality was at like 60 something percent and yeah. that was still okay for them to be there. Yeah. So they had to send them back through like two rounds of training so that they could start kind of getting better mm-hmm. <laughs> so that they could have my job. <laughs> <laughs> like, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks guys. So do you miss working at the bank? <laughs> <laughs> well, what kind of sucks is I honestly really liked that job. Did I, you? It was very therapeutic. Yeah. It was just like mm-hmm. I I had my uh, my own like it really really nice like cubicle like they were yeah. just, like miniature offices practically. Oh yeah, like, they were really nice cubes mm-hmm. like fucking like eight feet high like I, the oh, windows yeah. like like there was just uh-huh. like a tiny little spot to walk into the cube and that was yeah. it. So it was it was very closed off. Had a bookcase, like I had mm-hmm. a bunch of you know stuff and little knickknacks, but yeah, it was DVD rack. <laughs> I'll say I spent most of my days just like sitting there, like yeah. like on the fucking internet, like it's like oh, oh yeah, uh, read some movie news, like see yeah. what's going on on like IGN, like oh hell that new game's coming out. That was that was me <laughs> when I worked at Comcast, cubicle like the one you described, um, internet anything but my job <laughs> yeah, it's like i'd be sitting there like reading like fucking movie reviews and yeah. shit all fucking day until eventually like three o'clock in the afternoon somebody would come over like it's like oh here's here's one loan packet it's like okay 20 minutes later mm-hmm. back to the internet <laughs> yeah it's like well i've done my quota for today back to tmz <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was, it was fucking weird uh yeah, it never got as bad as like people running around like throwing paper in the air. Or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure at the home office it probably was. <laughs> well, the movie is kind of like um, because it's about it's about a select few people who predicted the 07, 08 financial crisis, um, and their basically basically their plan to profit all of it. So profit off of it. So it's this really intricate, precise kind of gamble that they've taken on seriously making money off of that. And it's interesting because it kind of makes it like this sort of almost Ocean's Eleven yeah, thing. It's, it's almost kind of a heist film. If in they the way felt horrible about it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like a reverse heist movie. Yeah. Like they're trying to, like, it's almost like they're trying to figure out how to put something back. Uh-huh. But there's not really a way to. <laughs> yeah, like Brad Pitt scolds them for celebrating because if they win, yeah, they get a lot of fucking money. But millions of fucking people lose their homes, their savings, and everything. So it's sort of like, yeah, if if Danny Ocean wanted to, he he really wanted to rob Andy Garcia, but just felt like a dick about it. <laughs> like, gotta, oh man, like... You got a theory. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, he's stealing all that money, and it's like, mm-hmm. wah, wah, and then they're all like, walking away, like, mm-hmm. it's like, oh man, that was the perfect heist. It's like, they're gonna have to close that casino. That's yeah. like, like, probably three, four hundred staff members. Uh-huh. Putting all of them out of work. Just, yeah, just out on their uh-huh. ass. And Andy Garcia, Anybody that works security, like, they're fired that mm-hmm. fucking day. Like, they don't even... It's like They got families, homes, you know, <laughs> rent, mortgage, all of that shit. Like, Vegas God, is not a cheap town to live in. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> really, like, really, like, I mean, what are we... Oh, should we even be doing this? <laughs> well, I guess there's, you know, a fountain there. We can stand in front of that and look happy and be on our way. <laughs> Really, the biggest crisis that came from Ocean's Eleven was Ocean's Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Sick Ocean's Twelve burn. Really though, no, I hate that one. I that really sucked. Really that, that one, one really fucking sucked. That's like, the twist. She looks like Julia Roberts. It's like, oh, oh, I would, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> I liked Ocean's Thirteen. That was all right. Al Pacino was fun. <laughs> 
I don't know if I've ever gotten around to watching that one just based off of how much I disliked Ocean's Totally, 12. it's way more like the first one. It's way more like Ocean's 11 than <laughs> Ocean. Basically, they were like, Ocean's 12 sucked. Let's make no nothing like that. Let's just do the first one again. <laughs> just put everything back where it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just, do, let's just do Ocean's 11 again. All right, cool. <laughs> now they're robbing Al Pacino instead of Andy Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> Before no. we had the poor man's Pacino, now we have the rich man's Garcia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it bookends the series nicely. <laughs> you got two delicious Oreo cookies. If in the middle, it's just shit instead of cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's like those weird like flavors they get sometimes like it's like what's inside this one I don't know raspberry and lime sorbet <laughs> well just give me the fucking milk <laughs> <laughs> or those <laughs> fake flavors you see online like Oreo ramen <laughs> uh, I guess I'll try it I'm much I gotta keep an eye on time so the <laughs> ladies can talk about Sherlock <laughs> the battery wasn't quite as charged as I thought there was plenty of time we could talk about way more heist movies <laughs> that's the thing like this movie is it's kind of hard to talk about it's hard for me to talk about because I'm not an expert on this shit <laughs> I can tell I can tell this is a wildly entertaining movie other things that reminded me of like in a good way the kind of era that it seems to belong in from being this movie is over two hours long it didn't it feel like that to me it goes by at a really quick pace it's yeah, it, thoroughly entertaining it it keeps a good clip like despite all the moving pieces and mm -hmm. the fact that it takes place over a fairly extended period of time yeah like it, it keeps going at a really mm -hmm. really nice clip like it never really it never really hits any moments where it like slows down or at least not like the uh the momentum that it has like even mm -hmm. though, like like lulls in the story where it's like nothing's really happening no one's sure what's going on like it still keeps itself moving but i think it's that really bizarrely kinetic uh style that it has to the editing like it had to have been really fun to edit this movie <laughs> like all right here we got this scene with steve carell visibly just feeling nauseous about how fucking fraudulent these people are. Let's put a laugh track over it. It yeah. had been really fun to edit this movie. That was so weird, just adding in, like, the canned laughter. And yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like Steve Carell, like, he's he's predicted this, and, like, you know, he's sticking with this because he knows this collapse is going to happen. And But God damn, it just makes him <laughs> sick. <laughs> what I like, too, that he basically played it like really, really, really angry Paul Lint with like an yeah. ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you expect there to be a lot of seat. Like he'd be one of those characters in the movies who's always like popping some like fucking heart pills, every yeah. ulcer pills every two minutes. <laughs> Just, uh, just <laughs> take a bunch of Tums, wash it down with my Lanto. <laughs> That's what Kristen Bale was doing. There was always a thing of Tums sitting like next to his desk. <laughs> <laughs> Even when he's not eating, like that one scene, he wakes up in the middle of the night in his office, laying on the floor. Yeah, like, just files all around him. Bottle of Tums right next to mm -hmm. him. I, I really recommend this movie. Um, it's it's a really fun flick considering its subject matter. I yeah. mean, they 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 really. But I mean, it's it's also a serious movie. It's just got a sense of humor about itself. Um, when shit gets pretty fucking rough and serious, like they do treat that seriously. They just kind of have fun with explaining the situation to you. Yeah, like they they try to. Because this is the sort of thing, like, if they'd made this just a straight, like, st absolutely, like, 100%, like, straight drama, by the time this was over, you'd be so just... Very confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, like jaded and vaguely yeah. depressed. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, remember that shit that we just barely are getting away from now? Yeah. Fucking Bullshit. <laughs> like, that's the sort of movie like like I could see Dave watching that and getting just thoroughly pissed, not even knowing why, mm -hmm. but just being pissed. Like me and Irving after we saw Spotlight. Like uh Oh like, the, the, like, the church one. Yeah. yeah. Like like <laughs> that movie, like like uh, I mean this is a story that we all knew about and certainly remember when all that shit broke, but oh dude, when you see it play out in front of you, it just makes you mad. God damn it, I'm pissed about that shit. <laughs> Yeah, like at least it's like the the vaguely 
not not like sugar coating it, but just like the the lighter way in which it plays by making it vaguely like darkly comedic. Yeah, like for instance, the scene where the two guys find the little pamphlet exp- like predicting the situation on the table, and then they kind of pause and say, "By the way, this isn't actually how this happened." <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't just find this here. Like he heard from a guy. Like I, I talked to some people, and we we eventually found this information mm. out. But for the purposes, yeah. hey, look at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like those moments in like Pain and Gain where it's like by the way this is a true story when Dwayne Johnson is like fucking grilling fingerprints off severed hands yeah <laughs> oh bet <laughs> no I it was we're seeing this on a Tuesday night um cause the the ladies went to Sherlock and I was like is there anything we haven't seen yet oh big short alright so we go see this on a Tuesday night they know way more about Sherlock than I do. Um, and that they, they've they seen, like, I've seen, like, two episodes. <laughs> but uh, um, it was pretty crowded in there. Like, there were people who were sitting in the front. Yeah, I mean, we were, <clears throat> I mean, we were in one of the smaller auditoriums, but mm-hmm. even at that, like, like, we've been to, like, bigger movies on, like, the preview night. Yeah. And it hasn't had that many people in, mm-hmm. in one of the theaters. Oh, yeah. Like, I... How many times have we been to like, like, oh man, like big blockbuster movie coming out, like opening like night for it? There's like three other people there besides us. Uh, it's like Gem and the Holograms, and we go see it at a seven o'clock showing <laughs> on Saturday night, opening weekend. Only fucking ones there. It's dead as shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's 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 weird, but yeah, like this one was like surprisingly full for yeah, like so like, mm. like a a midweek showing. Yeah. Like. Like that, I was very surprised when we turned the corner. I was like, "Shit, we have to, have to um, think about where we're gonna sit." Right over there, over there, towards the towards the end. All right, that <laughs> works. We're not in the fucking front. Um, yeah. So I mean, I'm always glad when something like that happens with what turns out to be a really fucking good movie. So, uh, I'd I'd recommend checking this out in in theaters. It's probably one of the better ones playing right now. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd definitely recommend it. Like it's it's a really really good movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, with with the editing, it, it's either going to be like a love or hate situation. I loved it, like, but I mean, if you're not into that style, then... But yeah, it, it's it's kind of a sort of thing, like if you're going in expecting just like a straight, mm-hmm. <clears throat> a straight kind of movie, like, like this one takes a lot of weird liberties and risks with like how it's edited, but mm-hmm. I mean, it, as a whole, it comes out really well and it really mm-hmm. works for, for the style of the movie. Yeah. But yeah, like it, it can be, it can be vaguely disorienting there at first. Cause yeah, like the first like first five ten minutes of watching this, I'm like, like what the fuck is even going on? Like showing scenes in like slow motion. Like, uh huh. We're we're looking at like pictures of food while it's talking about like mortgages, like fucking Harley Quinn in a fucking bathtub. Like I don't know what the fuck is happening. It's it's like if Natural Born <laughs> Killers Oliver Stone made Wall Street. <laughs> honestly yeah and if, honestly very very much that thing i kind of dig that very much that that is <laughs> that is actually a very good way of summing that up because yeah, yeah. Like, like it change in visual styles yeah. like like you'd have somebody like like just odd things like you'd have a guy talking here at a podium in a big like jumbotron projector screen mm-hmm. next to him and it'll just pan away and it'll we'll watch the whole scene on the projector so it looks really shitty mm-hmm. it's like like just odd choices yeah. all the time we're like cut away to do like some weird little like vignette it's like okay <laughs> it's a style that i liked back in the 90s adam mckay seems to be a big fan of it as a result of this um so I kind of liked seeing that put to good use as opposed to like when we saw fucking savages, which sucked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I liked seeing that style that I liked back then kind of back and, and put to a pretty entertaining use and really kind of take this subject matter that I don't know a lot about and make it understandable for me and, and kind of and easy to follow. Cause and, yeah, like you, you, you have to have some sort of way to boil this down. Otherwise it's just them like, talking about vague things yeah and you just have to gauge like like well i don't know like you know like finn whitrock whatever the fuck his name is uh dandy from american horror story like you have to either like 
trust that he's really pissed about this. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I should be weary of those CDOs. Yeah. This is a fucking I was like, oh, good. No, it was like somebody explained it to me already using fish. I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Oh, I could, I could, I love seafood. I can, I can, I can deal with the fish analogy here. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 it really works to kind of make it more accessible than this material actually is because mm. it's, it's wildly complicated stuff. Yeah. And so I, I, yeah, I, I recommend this really for anyone to go see. Uh, that's I've heard uh, pretty much all my final thoughts on it. Um, I imagine we, <laughs> we'll be having a wildly different movie conversation when we talk about the forest in a couple of days. <laughs> that comes out Thursday. <laughs> Yay, January! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we still got like the uh like the stuff from limited release in December that's getting wide release in January. So we get a mixture of like stuff like this. It's like and... here's an amazing movie which, which will be up for awards. Here's a movie that'll be on Netflix like <laughs> yeah. immediately following this release window. And here's the forest. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> 